some of this stuff that I'm letting them know in my book. So that's, wow. that's what I'm doing with myself. Good Lord. Oh, James, jump in anywhere you want. This is this. Uh, sure. Uh, oh. Well, uh, uh, I was uh, really uh, uh, taken by some of the stuff that comes out in Rachel's books. Like these are extremely well written. Um, they're uh, sus- I, I I look on them as like suspense novels. I I kind of compare them to uh, uh, reading the books. It's kind of like watching the net with Sandra Bullock. It's about a young lady up against. Uh, uh, the big corporate system. But when I read uh, about her experiences at the GOP convention, the stuff about the piped in applause um, really struck me because, uh, you know, I've been to sports stadiums with my, taking my son to like a basketball game and uh, you hear this ear splitting applause and you look around, you realize the, the crowd isn't that loud to make your ears ring like that. And uh, that's what happened at this uh, GOP convention that Rachel attended. They, you know, when the home team is losing and the ch- fans aren't cheering, for Mitt Romney, they had to bring in fake applause. But all across America, people thought they were hearing the real thing. And it's a reminder of how much our world is scripted. And uh, the whole thing with, um, with Mitt Romney um, not getting uh, the a- a- election uh, nomination because of the rules change. If people didn't get it. One of the rules changes that they had at the last second was they raised the number of states needed to get a nomination. He'd won enough, but according to the current rules, he'd won five, but they raised it to eight so that uh, he would be shut out totally. And uh, and they told Ron Paul uh, that he could make a speech, but if he made the speech, he'd have to endorse Mitt Romney, and the speech would have to be uh, vetted and approved by the uh, Republican National Convention, so of uh, the the, uh, the party, and so uh, Ron Paul declined to even speak at the convention. But you know, this was all across America that this was happening. Can I um, say something about that too? Uh, yeah, that you just mentioned? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not only did they not allow Ron Paul to give his speech, they didn't even allow his name to be mentioned <laughs> when they were counting off the delegates for each state, and you know when they were having this big thing. They had like it was almost like a wheel of fortune graphic running on this um, these big flat screen TVs I was telling you about. And it was almost like a, a wheel of fortune or a, a what do you call that? A slot machine. It was like a slot machine, and then it would tell what the delegates were in that state, right? And they didn't mention Ron Paul in one state. They wouldn't allow the name. So from the floor people would shout out, Ron Paul 7. Like they would just like, it was hmm. every state, they wouldn't say even say the word Ron Paul. He, yeah. Even his son couldn't even say his name while giving his speech, while Rand was giving his speech, he couldn't say his father's name. <laughs> so the wimpy empire strikes back and strikes and strikes yeah. and strikes. Yeah. You know, this whole thing about the, well, Hillary really appears to be the establishment's choice. Well, duh. Yes. And Ted Cruz really appears to be the establishment's choice. It would have been better if we could get Rubio, given his past. He could be easily manipulated if we could do that. But, oh, well, uh, what has happened to our electoral process exactly? Has it, has it just been blatantly, transparently, and obviously hijacked? I mean, is that what this is? Because uh, Trump is a real anomaly as it stands now. I mean, maybe the, maybe the first one ever. Kind of what it sounds like. The last time I checked, he's not CIA, at least not yet. <laughs> you know? You, you want me to go Any, with this? Anybody want any I, of that? I am of the opinion now that our election system is a massive psyop. That's, that's where I'm at. <laughs> and I know it sounds just crazy, but I know it's always been marketing. Like, I was in the marketing department for this defense contractor. I know that it's all about getting the right place to feature your product at the right time. I also know it's about that marketing. It's also important to feature if you want to be the anti of that story at the right place at the right time. Sometimes it's all about stock. The, well, not sometimes, an awful lot when you're working for a corporation. It's all about the stocks and how that's moving. And sometimes bad news makes stocks stocks move a certain way. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, so 
my point is, I know that advertising and the media, it does influence, I know for a fact, it influences the stock market. And I also know for a fact that advertising the media in this election has full on got people to believe that their votes in a primary actually count. It's, it's never real. It never did. It never actually did. The only thing that blew me away was because let me <laughs> to, to take that statement and like clarify it. There's nothing in the Constitution about political parties. There's nothing in the Constitution about primaries or caucuses. The way they used to do it was just they'd meet at the club and you know they'd say, oh, who we want to debate from that guy from another state and let's see who we want to run and. It, 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 these are two very elite groups that have evolved in our country that have somehow made themselves intertwined with our life that we think it's part of being a good American to get on one of their teams. That's not really the case. Like I said, they used to be very rich. They'd meet at the club, decide who's going to go debate who, and then they'd pick, oh, he would give, he bought me more drinks. Okay, we'll make him president. It'd be great. So, <laughs> but then as soon as television came along, all of a sudden it became people were like, oh, they're having a convention. Oh, I want to be more involved in this process. And because the media could make money, because they could, this process became very like in people's faces. If you look back on the history of the um, delegates and the history of the vote counts of the delegates, it only really goes back to the 1950s. That's because they really didn't keep track like any of this, like like we do now. In fact, yesterday I just went to go see how many people actually came out of their house to go vote during the primaries and the caucuses. And that was very difficult to do because everything was lined up for delegates. I was like, no, 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 you know, the delegate counts. They've got meters of these delegate counts. I'm like, no, I want to know how many people actually got in their car and drove and voted. I didn't find that right away. It's that real clear politics, by the way. And you should also be aware that Trump has 10, over 10 million people that went and voted for him. Hillary has over 12 million people that voted for her. So if it was head to head, Hillary would win. But then, of course, you break it down. Well, if we can get the whole Republican Party, everybody that came out to vote, and they switched over to Trump, yeah, he, he could blow her away. But here's the other thing. Would the nine million people that came out and voted for Sanders hook up with Hillary and try to blow away Trump? Well, yes, they would definitely want to blow away Trump. Whereas I don't know about the Repub other Republican Party people if they would want to hook up with. I don't know. If, I don't know if their hatred of Hillary is so bad that they would do that. Maybe they would. But oh, you know, this I, is just like I said, I think this whole entire thing is just get people into this idea that they have to pick one or the other of these two, this two team system. And honestly, it was never set up to be like that. Yeah, that's it. I mean, look at look at look at poor Ralph Nader, even uh, even Lyndon LaRouche, you know, no chance, no chance. It's, it's just amazing. And this morning, th there's also the uh, this this psyop seems to be working pretty well because this, as, as recently as this morning, there's a guy came, uh, who came on to, um, he was just a caller to a, a local talk show at a, at a big station in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's uh, WVAP, the big one, 8.20 a.m. Just blows out all over the place. You can hear it clean down to Austin, and um, which is not that much of a stretch. It's only 200 miles, but I digress. And what he was saying was that, well, he just can't bring himself, no matter what, he just cannot bring himself to vote for Trump. And the guy's like, well, so what are you going to go the other way? It's, well, and he just agonizes around it, uh, 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 around the part about not answering the question, which is, so what are you going to do? You going to uh, throw in for Bernie or are you going to throw in for Hildebeest or whoever winds up being the Democratic nominee? I mean, what? And uh, <sighs> do these people not that, understand you cannot you get, get the candidate that you want? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, but that's where people, they're boxed in. They don't know what to do. They are uh, uh, they get so confused. Now they're literally confused. It's like a short circuit because you've only got two choices. When in reality, you have many more. And in reality, 
with our Constitution, the way it's set up and everything else, they really wanted the people to put forth the best that they had. Hey, uh, by doing this political party, which is ridiculous, the fact that these political parties, they are so rich. You don't understand. I talk about in the book, The Big Show, how the, the entry into the convention center, there were these long tents because it was raining, you know, because it was, you should have been a hurricane, but it wasn't. It was, they put these giant tents up and every eight, I would say every 10 feet on the ceiling, there were these giant, giant, all red roses, a 10, I would say maybe six feet in diameter. Wow. Round arrangements, all red roses, every 10 feet down the um, way from every direction into the convention center. Yeah, the Just local the florist is pretty happy about that sale. Millions of dollars. Wow. And they had red carpets going all the way in, all the way in. <laughs> it, was, it was just, a gr it was a gross display of, of money. A gross display of money. Hey, James, you should probably sw uh, click your camera off and then click it back on because you're frozen in a very pensive... Oh. And most majestic oh, yeah, I, uh, pose. Uh, I noticed that. I thought that you, you guys did that to no. me. No, ah. man. I would, we, we wouldn't do that. Oh. Here, here. stop him on a place where he really looks good. There, that's it. Freeze him right there. No, okay. we oh, didn't wait, do that. Go. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know I was Mr. Freeze. Um, I hold that position a long time. You know, I was starting to, you know, the, the blood was starting to, you know, <laughs> Look, regulate. it's the guy. Um, I thought I choked up. I, I didn't realize that it happened. Um, but uh, you know what I want to do? I wanted to validate what Rachel said about um, uh, the Ron Paul people, and I'm going to read to you something I got from uh, somebody who worked for Ron Paul in my state of Massachusetts. Okay, just to kind of corroborate back up what she's saying here. It says, "Quote: I saw with my own eyes the effect of the rules change on the delegates. The Massachusetts primary, the party hacks were there running for delegate, and the Ron Paul candidates were there. I went out to Framingham that Saturday morning to be there at 8 a.m. so I could participate." We Ron Paul supporters knew that even if the Ron Paul supporting delegates won the primary and went to the convention, that they would have to vote for the party's candidate on the first ballot, which we all assume would be Mittens. That said, if the first ballot didn't elect Mittens convincingly, then all bets were off on the second ballot, meaning all of Ron Paul's delegates could then vote any way they wanted on the second ballot. <clears throat> well, that primary day in Framingham, the Ron Paul candidates crushed, and I mean crushed, all the party hack delegate candidates. It wasn't even close. So that meant that all of the delegates the voters sent to the convention for Massachusetts would, if it went to a second ballot, be voting for Ron Paul. Well, within days, those corrupt hacks voided the votes of that primary and sent all the losers to the convention so they could vote for mittens. And that's when I vowed I would no longer be a fool or think that this utterly disgusting, corrupt, putrid, murderous system had any worthwhile aspects at all done, no longer vote, no longer care. I'm only embarrassed it took me so long to find out, unquote. That's from somebody who worked for Ron Paul in my state. And, you know, Rachel was talking about the fake hurricane. You know, they're, they're, they're bringing this, you know, about geoengineering and weather control, John. Oh, yes. I, I found out that the Rothschilds own 70% of uh, Weather Central, and that they own that before the 2012 convention. Um, and that's what on Wikipedia they own it, okay? But um, uh, here's something else that came from uh, from uh, Ben Swan uh, reports on shenanigans in Maine. This is the 2012 uh, convention up there. Uh, quote, even though 84% of the votes had been counted, state GOP chairman Charlie Webster declared Romney the winner over Paul by less than 200 votes. Hancock and Washington counties hadn't voted yet because Webster canceled the caucuses due to an impending snowstorm, <laughs> promising they could vote later and their votes would be counted. The snowstorm never occurred. And he later reneged on that promise, telling voters in those counties their votes would not be counted after all. Washington County was Paul's strongest in 2008. Unquote. So you see, all of these, and I could go on forever, but uh, the, the state primaries were rigged for Romney, and the ones he still pulled off when they got to the convention, they changed the rules. So, and as Rachel said, his name couldn't even be mentioned by his own son. And so uh, this is... Uh,